Hey guys, how are you all doing today? It's Jordan here from Switchwatch, back again, this time with a review of The Longest 5 Minutes. Now this is quite an expensive game from NIS America, thanks to them for providing a review code so I could tell you if this game is worth your hard earned cash or not. Now before I get into the review, I just want to let you guys know that actually Switchwatch have done two reviews of this game. I have produced a video review for you, but Brian over at switchwatch.co.uk has written his own review that you should probably check out after this video to see if our views match up. And it's always nice to have a second opinion. So is the longest five minutes worth your hard earned cash or not? Let's find out. The Longest 5 Minutes is most certainly an intriguing game, not only for its concept but also how it completely subverts your expectations. The standard classic JRPG this is not. NIS America are known for bringing some quirky Japanese games to western shores and they've done it again with this little title developed by Super DX. Like much of this game, the story is really quite peculiar, not because of the story itself but the way it is told. You are the hero flashback. He and his allies have reached the final boss, the Demon King. Yes, you're thrusted straight into the final boss. I don't think this is particularly unique in itself, but it's what the longest five minutes does with it that makes it special. Just as the battle starts, Flash realizes he has lost his entire memory. He has no idea where he is, what he's doing, or why he is here. Much to his allies' dismay, he has succumbed to amnesia. What's fascinating is that the entire game and its story revolve around Flash trying to remember everything during the final boss battle. Thoughts and dialogue take place over just a 5 minute period where he and his friends struggle against the mighty Demon King's power as he clings onto his lost memories to become useful in this final battle. The whole game takes place within a short 5 minute window. As the seconds ache by, your friends help Flash regain his memories while also staving off deadly attacks. Every few seconds, Flash will delve into his mind in order to remember parts of the journey that led to this very moment. The journey of this game is not getting to the final boss, but remembering how you got there. After a brief interrogation, Flash remembers the very beginning of his journey, which is then played out by the player. You're taken through a roller coaster ride of memory bubbles right up until you face the big boss himself. I actually really love this method of storytelling. Between memories, you revert back to the present situation where the battle goes on a little longer, making some battle decisions and then delving back into another memory. Like the story, I think the music is rather quite lovely, I think it's fantastic. It captures the feeling of 8-bit and 16-bit era JRPGs perfectly with modern capabilities. It has some of the best melodic town tunes and exciting battle music. The longest 5 minutes just about has it all in this department. It has so much variety in styles too, which I find very commendable. If this game was actually released during the Super Nintendo era, I'm sure this soundtrack would be well regarded even today. It's actually one of the best aspects of the game for sure. I think the visuals are quite divisive. While I do generally enjoy pixel work and can appreciate the effort gone into it, I also mostly associate it with cheaper indie games. The Longest 5 Minutes is not a cheap game, in fact it's in a tier that I consider just below AAA. For a game priced so highly upon release, many of you will look at the visuals and the price and be quite confused. I don't blame you to be honest. While the NES style pixel work can be quite lovely, it doesn't scream like a whole lot of work went into it. One of my main issues with the visuals is the lack of effects or cinematic moments. For example, rather early on you're on a ship crossing the ocean and like in every JRPG ever, the ship runs into trouble, getting attacked by a large creature 
and the situation appears dire. Aside from the dialogue, you would never know that, as the background is pretty much static. There's no screen shaking or turbulent waters, rain lashing or anything like that. It's a missed opportunity for something a bit more special. I found this to be a feature throughout the game. It's disappointing about the lack of visual flair. Just to counter that though, I do think I should give a special shout out to how bright and colourful the game looks when in handheld mode. The sprites are so sharp and pristine, it may actually be the better way to play in my opinion. The gameplay is where things get difficult to talk about, even though the longest 5 minutes is a JRPG, it takes the concept more lightly than what is typical for the genre. Without wanting to sound too dismissive, the RPG elements are completely superfluous, irrelevant, pointless. Due to the episodic nature of the game where you dip in and out of memories, occasionally in a non-linear time structure, your stats and items, everything is kept within a bubble of each of the mini episodes. This means nothing carries through at all. If you level up a lot, buy fancy new equipment, it means diddly squat as it will soon be lost when that episode ends and you move on to the next one. I totally understand why this is a thing, but it is still odd to say the least. What is the point of item shops, loot and equipment? They could easily have cut these out and it still kept the game as it was intended to be like. The only thing that carries through are re-experience points which are awarded for carrying out different tasks within each episode. Sometimes outside of the main goal of the episode, there may be one or two little tasks that you can do to earn extra experience to help you in the final battle. Mostly they are very simple things like help this citizen find their thing. The game points you in the direction too, by showing those concerned with side quests with exclamation marks over their heads. They are worth doing for the extra points, but aren't particularly inspired or anything. Aside from that, the overall gameplay plays very similar to most of your standard early JRPGs. From a visual standpoint, if you just look at screenshots, it looks like a mixture of like Dragon Quest or Earthbound but it's very clearly more like the former and its RPG rival Final Fantasy. You walk through towns, dungeons and overworlds, running into random battles with equally random monsters. You spend the majority of your time with the same four party members and each of them have their set standard RPG classes. Flash is basically a paladin, Yuzu is the monk, Regen is a black mage and Clover is the healer. They each learn different abilities, although you have no control over that. Customization is limited, sadly. The Longest 5 Minutes is possibly one of the easiest RPGs that I've played in a very long time. It's pretty much a cakewalk the entire game and I never struggled at any point. Of course this means there's no dreaded grinding, but on the other hand, battles need very little strategy. It wasn't long until I found a very simple routine of who does what in every battle. Even the boss battles provided no threat. I think the difficulty could have been somewhat better balanced. On the other hand, some may find this laid backness somewhat refreshing. As a question of value, you do need to look at the high price point. Coming in at £39.99 or $39.99, it's quite an eye-watering price and I'm sure that's higher than you were probably expecting just looking at it. It's an NIS America game though, and they are very steadfast in their game pricing, but you can always trust them to give you something of decent quality. Is the longest 5 minutes worth it? It's honestly very difficult for me to say. I did enjoy the story, but I don't think the gameplay is quite there, at least on an interactive level. It's a fairly lengthy game, but still shorter than your average JRPG I would say, and I think if I personally paid full whack for it, I may have been slightly on the disappointed side. For me, this is a game I would be happy to pick up for something just under £30 maybe. As an aside, I'm not particularly happy with the price conversion either. In no known universe is $40 the same as £40. It's kind of unacceptable. If any UK watchers out there want to buy this game, do yourself a favour and get it from the American eShop, not the UK one. Overall. I feel The Longest 5 Minutes is a difficult game to critique because it does something so far from what you expect that it's easy to be criticised for failings in places where you think it should excel. The RPG tropes are almost superfluous with stat building, item nabbing and money all being rather worthless. Not to mention that the game is painfully easy for the most part, you could play it in your sleep. But even though it sells itself as a JRPG, it's actually much more of a story focused adventure. It's about the characters, their relationships and the mental journey that Flash goes through on reacquiring his memories. 
it does that part exceedingly well. I thoroughly enjoyed finding out the adventures of Flash and his friends and how they would finally defeat the Demon King, and I'm sure if you don't mind the rather basic gameplay, you will too. I would award the longest 5 minutes a 7 out of 10. Ok guys, I hope you've enjoyed this review. Remember that Brian over at switchwatch.co.uk has written his own review on this game, so go check that out for a second opinion. If you're a regular Switch Watcher then do us a favour and click that like button and leave us a comment too. Do you plan on picking the longest 5 minutes up? Is it too expensive? What do you think of the pixel work? If you're new here then why not consider subscribing for more excellent, awesome, wonderful Switch reviews far into the future. I've been Jordan from Switch Watch and I'll see you next time.